Hello and welcome to the next video of my um, ZX Spectrum Repair. This time I have got a couple of things here. I've got a recapping to do. I also have the DC jack connector here, which uh, I can just put under there, which saves me from, you know, powering it from this stuff. And I could just power it from the normal, uh, you know, AC adapter that came with it. So let's get started on this thing then. First things first, I'm going to put the DC jack on, you know, just to kind of make things easier, the easier stuff first. Okay, so we have the inner, inner tip here, which is, in this case, the positive. No, it's not. Oh no, it's the negative, sorry. <laughs> it's a bit confusing because usually the inner part is the positive. In this case of this ZX Spectrum 48K, the inner part is the negative and the outer case, or the outer sleeve, is the um, uh, negative. Did I get that right? No. <laughs> this is so confusing because I'm so used to it being the other way around. <laughs> okay, so the, the inner part is positive and the outer part is negative. Yeah, that's it. Oh! So the inner part is negative and the outer part is positive, which is kind of strange, but okay. Whatever floats their boat, whatever floated their boat, I'm sorry, he floated away. <laughs> so this part here connects to the, the outer sleeve, the outer casing, which in this case is positive. And uh, the internal one connects to. Let's have a look. Which one? That one. So this back one is the inner tip, and this one, the side one here, is the sleeve. Let's desolder this. Okay. So I'm gonna like get some super glue and stick that. Okay, so just one little dab of super glue, one little spoon. Come on, get the fully count. Put this in here, and this one kind of gets stuck, and let's just like press it on really tight. Because when you kind of just like move around, that's when it just doesn't bond or stick. Okay, so this is thin and stick. Do you know the top pin of the DC power socket, which actually does not connect to anything. I'm just gonna solder a big blob on it to kind of give it some, give it an anchor, you know what I mean? So it kind of, there's something to hold it, something else solid other than the glue to hold it to the board. Okay, so let me just double check this, this pad here to see if it's negative. Yes it is. So, so this pad here is negative this is positive. I'm gonna have to connect this negative to here, which is the center pin, that, that pin here. Let's test if these two... Okay, it's on. Okay, so it did not power up because I did a slight bit of a boo-boo, and that is, um, I connected the positive to the switch instead of, you know, the actual one. So when I can, so this actually connects to the sleeve, however, when you plug the thing in, this disconnects, and that ends up being positive. So basically I need to connect this to that without being connected to this pin. So I'm gonna need another wire to crisscross there, great. <laughs> And I just thought I could just minimize the, the clutter around here, I have to freak it up more. So we connect this to here. It's good. And then connect solar is under here. Test for any shorts. This is the positive going to here on the circuit board, and the inner one is a negative. Now let's hope that this is fine. <laughs> I 
Okay, as you can see here, the Sinclair Spectrum powers up, so that means the DC connector is, you know, a success. Now let's pull the DC connector out, and now it's just a matter of starting capacitor replacement. So over here, we have two 25 volt, 22 microfarad capacitors. Let's get those out from here. Mike Farad. These are Panasonic capacitors. Very good quality. Last for many years to come. Okay, here we are. So we have 25 volts and 22 mic Farad. That's one. And okay, so let's get my flux out. Let's put some of it on the soldering wick. Let's begin. So here we have. So we have this one here. Actually, you know what the best thing to do? It's just the curtain. Before desoldering, these sol the soldiers are old, so just solder a bit of new solder onto them. We melt it within it first before desoldering. This makes desoldering much easier. Hurt me. The first capacitor is always a pain to come out. Let's hope that. Let's hope it's just the first capacitor and the rest are easy. Oh, okay, that came out pretty freaking easy, to be honest. I was surprised. I didn't think it was gonna be that easy. Let's hope the rest of the capacitors are pleasantly surprised me like this. There you go. That's one capacitor on. It's like pulling teeth out. are out and does it oh before I take them out does it give the polarity man this does not have any indication of oh it does have indication where where are those ah oh, there positive okay I saw it now I'm not panicking anymore <laughs> okay there is some sort of indication I'm glad 22 microfarads 25 volts fantastico I think they call this type axial ones, I'm not sure, and this one, I don't know, I just call them canister. <laughs> so what I need to do is bend one of these pins all the way back across this, like that, and down, like this, just like that. So then we have the first two capacitors replaced here, this one, this one, and um, yeah, we just need to, we've got like eight more to go. <laughs> so let's continue with this one, let's move them down here. Now this is 4.7 microfarad and 25 volts. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desolder these first. And again, the negative is on towards the edge, just like these were. And then we'll do the same method here. So first things first, let's solder these solder and put new solder on again and um four of them it's good actually i can do two at a time rather than just one at a time feels like i've done more than <laughs> even though i'm just kind of kidding myself so let's get a solder in quick this now is gonna get in some flux then the desolder I hate desoldering. I like soldering, but I hate desoldering. <laughs> Actually, these may not be so bad. What I'm going to do now is loosen that and just pull from the other side with the pliers. And that's it. Ah! Whoa, that just came out. <laughs> that one was very eager to come out. He wants his retirement. 
this one out as well. His friend that was sat next to him for the past you know, 30 years. He needs to come out through and join him. And there we go. That's it. You can join your friend now. Now what were you two guys? Just before you go into retirement, I need to know your value. So, 4.7 mag fire, 25. Oh, it's fine, you here now. Okay, so the bottom one is 4.7 mag fire. So where is that? 4.7. Let's do the same thing here and bend this on the back. And then this downwards, and was it? I'm so bad, my number memory is so bad. 4.7 microfarads, and that was the one of them. Yes. I hope I'm right. <laughs> so let's um, put it down here. So we put this down in here. Press this down so it goes all the way down. And put the back here, just bend them inwards, so they don't, so it doesn't kind of like, you know, fall out and run away. So what else was here? These two retired fork. These two retired fork, one microfarad. Well, let's find the one microfarad, 50 volts. So leather, there you go, that's the one. And again, oops. And again, all we do is just bend the positive all the way back, and the negative, just bend it down, negative, put it in here, and bend the positive, and so it goes up here, and we just push this down inside. Like that. This here and that here. So here now it's just solder it in. That's one. That's two. That is three. And finally four. So we have four capacitors then. Let's just cut off the legs. We move on to the next one, which is one value is that one microfarad, 50 volt. Put this here, and we have. What I'm tempted to do is just go around the board, desolder in the capacitors. The next one is this one. So let's just desolder this. So you go positive at the top and the uh, negative at the bottom. So let's just bend you down a bit and put you inside here. Now I just need to find more soldering like
Okay, so I am back now and I have um, replaced all the capacitors, uh, all 10 of them here. Now it's just a matter of trying it. I really hope that, you know, it works. Um, if it doesn't, then there's something wrong with either the ULA chip, whatever that is, wherever that is. Um, I'm still learning about the spectrum, to be honest. Um, or it could be the memory chips here. Uh, it's just a shame that they're all um, soldered directly onto the board. Now let's uh, solder the chunk of the capacitors in the soldering wick, and I just ran out of soldering wick at the last minute <laughs> completely, so I had to kind of strip a wire and use that instead, which is just nasty. I'm gonna get some more soldering wick. <laughs> Right, so let's connect this and uh, see what we get on the screen. Let's hope it's not a big bang or some stupid thing like this. Well, unfortunately, it's still kind of doing this. Um, I placed all the caps, of course. <laughs> it's still doing that DC connector also. I'm, I've got a suspicion that it's... I get the feeling that it's maybe RAM or the... I'm so glad I did not order the rest of the stuff because I'm not even sure if I can fix this or not. Um, and the RAM seems to be 4116. I have RAM chips that are not 4116. There's something else. Okay, so let's see what we can do next. Uh, the next thing I'll see if I can find an OLED chip and... Um, I just hope it's not any of these chips because I do not want to desolder them. Well, if I have to, I'll have to, I suppose, but... <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for your likes, uh, your shares, and also do leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And, uh, of course, I will be continuing with this and other videos in between. So do subscribe for more. For now, I say adios.